this when is Insomniac like gave Miles Morales spider powers at the end of 2018 Spider-Man, I knew we were in for something pretty cool with their next game. What I didn't expect was a game quite this electrifying. <laughs> From the moment Miles walked off the main menu screen and onto the streets of Harlem, I fell in love with Insomniac Spider-Man Miles Morales. It immediately brought me back to my freshman year of college in Philly, the cold bustling mornings as I walked to class, jamming out to the soundtrack for Into the Spider-Verse, though I was probably nowhere near as enthusiastic as Miles. Like Spider-Verse, Miles Morales understands the musicality of Miles' life. It both represents his shared family roots with hip-hop in Harlem and the youthful energy that emanates from him. That then extends into John Pisano's score for the game. The swelling horns and pounding drums typically associated with Spider-Man remixed with a hip-hop beat underneath. The music that defined Peter Parker doesn't have to define Miles Morales, nor do the combat animations, the swing animations, the gadgets they use, the venom powers and invisibility that Miles has, the way they interact with NPCs, or even the season of New York they swing through. All of these distinguishing mechanics and ideas stem from this intro, the humble roots of a wide-eyed hero, a kid in his community, what it means to be Spider-Man when you're not really Spider-Man, not Peter Parker anyway. And that is what Miles Morales is all about. I'm New York's only Spider-Man. I'm New York's only Spider-Man. Where Into the Spider-Verse brilliantly explored how the mask of Spider-Man is not exclusive to any one person, regardless of identity or background, Insomniac's Year 2 story of Miles Morales beautifully explores the ways it is exclusive. To embody the powerful symbol of Spider-Man is to be greater. To be Miles Morales is to be yourself, which is precisely why the subtitle for the game is his name. Not only is Miles Morales unable to be Peter Parker, but he really shouldn't. That becomes increasingly apparent the further into the game you go. When Miles is back at his apartment, his mother's childhood home, Insomniac doesn't shy away from embracing Miles' Puerto Rican heritage, nor the history of his family members in Harlem. All the vinyl you select from is significant because they all relate in some way to his family. His heritage is significant because his family is inspired through it. For Miles, who is raised in Brooklyn and is mostly out of touch with his roots in Harlem, living here informs his identity in entirely new ways. Harlem is the home he never knew he had, and now that he's here as Spider-Man, he feels a newfound obligation to protect it, especially against Roxxon. Hey, uh, really great to meet you both. <laughs> Future's looking bright. Roxxon is a threat to Harlem. Their Neolithic skyscraper is an unnatural eyesore to the rooftop horizon. The installation of this building comes at the cost of a force that the disparaged communities of several US cities are so unfortunately displaced by. Gentrification, carried out by Roxxon's corporate militia. Insomniac never completely dips their toes into the racist implications of this idea and the story they tell, but the imagery that alludes to it is not by mistake especially not in 2020. Most importantly, Roxxon's presence is a critical blow to community resources, Harlem's autonomy, and the very cultural history Miles is acquainting with for the first time. And though Roxxon promises to bring innovation to Harlem with its new form energy, its potential is murdered by Simon Krieger, just as he all but murders the inventor of new form, Rick Mason. Few causes are truly more destructive than greed. As such, Insomniac symbolically captures the conflict in color. Roxxon poises to energize Harlem with a callous, icy blue energy. But Miles? His energy is a fiery yellow. It's warmth. New York may always need Spider-Man, but Harlem needs Miles. But a hero needs a suit, and probably not the awkwardly fitting one Spidey gave Miles. He is Spider-Man, but not in the same way Peter is. Not only does he lack the experience, mastery, and fortitude Peter possesses, but he just comes from a different place. What it means to be a hero to Peter comes from his mentors, Uncle Ben, Aunt May, and Dr. Octavius in the previous game. What it means to Miles comes from his heritage, the history of his father, his mother, and Harlem. So just as Peter carved the symbol of the spider out for himself, Miles leaves a new etching on Spider-Man's legacy, inspired by the Puerto Rican flag and his proud heritage. Unlike rocks on soldiers, this is Harlem's true red and black defender. This is Miles Morales. With most game studios, the making of a game is largely a community effort. 
a collaboration between talented artists with various skill sets, ideas, and backgrounds. This is never the case for Insomniac. The Peter Decoy gadgets, the Spider-Man the Cat suit you unlock after beating the campaign, and many of the game's other unique ideas are direct results of Insomniac's flexible design process. This is a studio that upholds the power of community, and that's perfectly reflected in the game. The ensemble cast of Miles Morales all have something to say about the community they fit into. Real Morales values the community of Harlem and runs a campaign built on bringing it closer together. Simon Krieger could care less about Harlem and is more worried about property than people. Danica Hart uses her radio show to acknowledge differing perspectives and offer constructive advice that improves people's lives. J. Jonah Jameson only cares about his perspective and spewing his vitriol. The Prowler may look out for Miles, but only because he understands the minimum importance of family, and still struggles to grasp the value of fitting into a larger community. People get stupid when they care about something. Like all great, young heroes, Miles is nurtured by the diversity of these perspectives, and comes to appreciate not only the power of a well-connected community, but how he can channel that power through action. The friendly neighborhood Spider-Man app, where people submit requests for Spider-Man's help, is Insomniac's latest attempt to unify more of the side content of New York. Rather than dismantling some super criminal's operations, you invariably devote most of your time to pursuing mostly practical solutions to everyday problems. Sometimes, that's finding a bodega owner's missing cat, removing ice from a crane, or tracking down a missing food truck. All of these tasks are simple, but they're purposeful. Just as Peter's interest in science propelled him to solve engineering problems that improve the safety of people and infrastructure the whole city over, the help Miles offers through the Spider-Man app is driven by his awareness for the little guy and brings him closer with the New York community. The kid who helped lift that couch onto the truck in the game's intro is the same kid helping people through the app here. This is how Miles becomes a hero for the people of New York, not necessarily by acting as a lone wolf, beating his problems to a pulp. This is the mindset that complicated the disaster at the bridge, where he spent his energy, his very literal venom energy powers, towards stopping the enemy. Rather, it's about being an empath and always acting out of the best interests of the people he represents. Sadly, not everyone as young and gifted as Miles quite gets that. Miles' best friend, Finn Mason, is the main antagonist of the game, though I shudder to truly call her that. Her intentions for Harlem are seemingly just, as is her love for Miles. But where Miles was able to productively channel his frustration through Feast in the first game, with the mentorship of Peter Parker, the loss of Finn's mentor leaves her completely alone. Embittered by how Roxxon threatens Harlem, and how Krieger betrayed her brother, Finn wields her anger into malleable weapons. Again, literally. Her solution is far more destructive, and is out of touch with the community's needs, despite what Finn believes. Just as Roxxon assembled their own corporate army, the underground is assembled to oppose it, thus beating fire with fire. Most tragically, the people of the underground are just kids. We glimpse that from the mission where Miles enters the underground headquarters, and sees firsthand a cult woven together by what is ultimately the misguided youth. This is further reflected in John Pizzano's leitmotif for the underground, utilizing the same youthful hip-hop beat heard in Miles' theme. They may be a community of their own, but their inability to consider different perspectives makes them just as much of a threat to the fabric of Harlem as Roxxon is. More than anything else in the game, Miles' battle against the underground highlights the difficulty of forging your identity, and the obligation a community has to instill its youngest members with the right morals, and never lead them astray. For all these reasons, Finn ends up being a tragic villain. The moment in which she realizes she has been led astray, that the death of her brother and mentor gave her anger she didn't know how to use, is already well past the point of no return. But it once again empowers the idea of community. Miles can't contain the new form reactor energy alone. He needed help. And that ended up being Finn. Harrowing as it is, it's a beautiful testament to the idea that no hero is ever alone. And for any of us to take the steps necessary to be heroic in our own life doesn't mean we should have to do it without the love of the people around us. That's not just heroic, that is human. At the sunset of 2020, a chaotic, definitively horrible year, 
I find Miles Morales to be the perfect game to reflect back with. I've spent a lot of time this year talking about young characters just like Miles. How a character like Ahsoka Tana was failed by her mentors. How people like Ellie and Abby struggled to disrupt the violent patterns of the generation that raised them. And how a reluctant hero like Cal Kestis must learn from the past to preserve the future. To me, these are all characters that have spoken to my journey in 2020, as they wrestle with the difficult pitfalls of coming of age in a world that isn't necessarily prepared to support them. Miles is similar to these characters. He fights to define himself as a hero in all the ways he knows how. But for all the reasons those characters faltered, Miles succeeds. Mentored by Spider-Man, guided by his rich heritage, and inspired by the community around him, Miles ascends to amazing new heights. He has the drive to swing into the future and be the change in a world where he's greatly needed. Miles' resolve and the story Insomniac builds around it practically permeates the entire game. Right from the pitch-perfect intro, Miles Morales is unabashedly optimistic about people and about their problems. That caught me off guard at first. I didn't realize until playing Miles Morales how many other games I played this year with heavy subject matter or apathetic attitudes towards humanity. And while the game might seem several layers removed from the dour state of reality, it's actually much closer than it seems. The Spider-Man app is just Uber Eats with a twist, finding a missing cat is structured into a stealth mission, and many of the actions you can take to help the New York community are possible in real life, just with less gameplay conventions. Imagine how that will impact the young kid playing this game. Rarely has being Spider-Man felt this close to reality, this actionable, far more than the overwhelming responsibility sometimes imposed by the first game. And that is a powerful notion. Miles still represents the same unbridled optimism and heroism of Peter Parker, but also shows us how to realistically be a hero for our own communities, in our everyday lives. As much as I love the original Spider-Man and all the ways Peter Parker has inspired me growing up, I can't deny how game director Brian Horton and the studio of Insomniac have made a compelling argument for why Miles is the Spider-Man we should all be rooting for. Because I'm Spider-Man. The world clamors for new young heroes more than ever. Not that Peter Parker is inadequate by any means, but he can't be Spider-Man forever. The people with the power and wealth to help, to give back, People like Simon Krieger, a stand-in for literally any soulless billionaire in our world, are the closest thing to real-world supervillains in Insomniac Spider-Verse. And because of the threat they pose to marginalized communities and the less privileged, the call to action for true heroes to step in the way has never been greater. That call may be beyond Peter, he won't always be there. But people like Miles? Not only can he be there, but his connection to his community and his background all bring new things to the table and equip him and future heroes to solve their community's problems with greater oversight than previously conceivable. And none of this would be possible without the love and altruism that all rising heroes are infused with, that Miles was infused with. Thus, the type of heroism Miles represents is electric. It will course through and jolt everyone, whether they rally behind it or against it. In this way, Miles becomes a bright, beaming symbol a beacon for all to follow, a lesson in how we can all be more and more like a friendly neighborhood. Spider-Man. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I wasn't planning to talk about this game just yet on the channel, but after finishing the story a few weeks ago, I just had a bunch of thoughts I really wanted to express, even if it didn't make for a super long video. In case you're curious, I will be talking about Insomniac's first Spider-Man game eventually. I don't know when, but at some point in the future. Before you click off the video, there's a few things I'd like to talk about. I want to officially welcome all of our new subscribers to the channel, and thank everyone who's gone out of their way to share my videos or leave a comment. You guys have warmed my heart uh, during what is usually a very difficult time of the year for me, so thank you for that. If you haven't yet subscribed, I humbly ask if you could. The sooner we get to 1,000 subscribers, the sooner I can monetize my content and give you guys regular updates on videos through the community tab. Until we unlock that feature, I do post updates on how my videos are coming along on Twitter, that's at ParksHarmon, and also on my Discord server, Sator's Artorium. The link to both of those is in the description below. 
You can also find me on twitch.tv forward slash Sator, where I stream my game playthroughs for future art tour videos. And it's especially important that I tell you this because this Thursday on Christmas Eve, I'll be streaming the entirety of Miles Morales from start to finish on hardest difficulty while raising money for charity. It's going to be a blast and a great time to talk even more about an awesome game. The details for that stream are in the description below, as well as the link to my channel. All right, that's all I got to say. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next year when I talk about Cyberpunk 2077. It's going to be fun. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Stay safe. Peace out.